as y'all know, I'm graduating high school in two days. And everybody's asking, what am I going to do once I graduate? And the answer to that is, I have no idea. But the Lord's going to guide me, and he's going to tell me what to do. Uh, there's been several different career paths that I've had for opportunities. Anything from flying planes to when I was little, I always wanted to be on TV. I love, being, I love TV, love watching TV. My sisters love watching TV. We do it all the time. But my parents said it'd be a better idea if I were to go in the radio. My face is better suited for it. So, uh, so I might, might have to go, my face is just right for the radio, so I might have to go that route. Um, but I just quit asking myself, you know, instead of what career path, what I'm going to do is, what is my purpose in life? Why am I here? Why am I in Spanish Fort, Alabama on this Sunday, May 15th, 2022? And I, I thought about it for a while, asked a lot of people, and I prayed about it, and I asked to live for Jesus. And if you can live for Jesus, you have a purpose in life. And today, I'm going to talk about the what, the how, the when, who, and the why of living for Jesus. And just for starters, I'm going to start off with what is living for Jesus. Well, Colossians 1, 10 through 14 sums it up pretty well. I'm going to read it for you. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people and the kingdom of life. Live for the, your life for the glory of God, to glorify God. That is your purpose. That is your life goal. That is living for Jesus. And God is all powerful and he loves us. And if you live for him, he's going to take care of you and all things are in God's hands. And now I'm going to read my favorite verse and that's Romans 8, 28. And basically it says, well, this is what it says. And we know that in all things, God works for good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. He reassures us that who, those who live for the Lord will be blessed by the Lord, and God's plan is perfect for his people. Now we'll move on to the how. How can we live for Jesus? Step one, it's avoiding sin. I know it's a very simple term, but it's actually really hard to do. And well, as we saw, sin box, it, he was trapped. He couldn't get out. It was really hard for him to get out. Um, but sin is of the world, and it's fun. But as Rosa said, the only way out of sin is through a relationship with Jesus. Next is to follow his plan for you. We all come from different families, different backgrounds, and we all came our different routes here this morning, but we all have different plans that God has for us. Um, mine is going to Kentucky in a week, and I'm going to be away for a long time, but that's just how God is going to use me. Um, others might be coming to your meetings, coming to church on Sundays. Um, when you get together with your friends and go bowling and you just talk about Jesus, that's, that's ways that God wants you to show. You will always have opportunities to share um, about the Lord. Um, also, he, we need to be bold for Christ. Being bold for Christ is telling others about Jesus. And a good way of doing that is through sharing your testimony. Um, sharing your testimony is basically telling your story of how God has impacted your life. Um, and next is through the Bible. And that is another way you can tell others about Jesus. But the Bible is your instruction book for life. And if you read the instructions, it really helps out a lot. Have you, anybody ever tried to put something together without reading the instructions? Did it go well for you? No, it doesn't. So if you read your instructions, it makes it a lot easier. And it will give you wisdom and help improve your life overall. Um, next is prayer. Prayer is what connects you with God. It's your way of communication. And really, praying is actually quite, comes quite easy to me because I think about it this way. God knows everything. He's all-knowing. So there's nothing you can hide from him. There's nothing that you can't share with him because he already knows. And you can have a really close relationship with him because of that. And next to have is to surround yourself with fellow Christians. This will help with the others. It will hold you accountable and helps you avoid sin. And this church is a great opportunity to get plugged in and surround yourself with some fellow Christians. Next is the who and the when. And well, that's us and that's now. Today is the day of salvation. And today we need to start living for Jesus. Why should we? This is the big one is why. That's the question everybody asks the most out of all the, all the questions is why. Why should we live for Jesus? And for starters, he created you. He says that in the beginning, Genesis 1-1, God created the heavens and the earth. It was beautiful. Next is he loves us. God loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us on that cross. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Whosoever, lived in, uh, whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. And he's also a forever friend. God truly loves you and he wants to be with you. The relationship you can build with your creator is worth living for him. And it has its benefits, and that is eternity with Christ in heaven. But the only way to do that is through Rose's ABCs. That's admitting that you're a sinner, believing that Jesus died for you to save you, 
and is confessing the Lord is your Savior. And then after that, you live for Jesus. Thank you.